In this video, I want to show you how to set up SSH key based authentication on a Linux server. Here I have set up a server which currently supports only password based authentication. That means I can SSH into the server as the root user using password only. Compared to password based authentication, a public and private key pair based authentication that is SSH key pair based authentication is more secure. First of all, we need to generate a key pair on our local machine. So exit from the server and now I am back on the desktop terminal. In order to generate a public and private key pair, there is a command called SSH key gen. To learn more about the SSH key gen command, you can look at the manual, which can be opened with man SSH key gen. Here you can find all the available options. For instance, the dash T option is used to specify the type of the key to create. RSA is the default key type, while ECDSA and ED25519 are also supported. Another commonly used option is the dash B option, which specifies the size of the key in bits. For an RSA key, 3072 bits is the default. Okay, I am going to create a key pair with the default settings. So there is no need to add any of the options. The default location for storing key pairs is the .ssh directory within the home directory of the current user. And the default key file name is id underscore rsa. You can enter a different file name if you want. Here I am going to name the file as caret-3 which is my server's host name. Leave the passphrase as empty. And there we have the key pair generated. Let me list the .ssh directory to see the newly created files. Here is the private key and here is the public key. Since the files are in the local machine, we can see them in the file explorer as well. The private key should be always kept safely on the local machine itself, while the public key can be uploaded to your servers. That is, you can use the same key pair with multiple servers if you want. No issues. Just make sure that the private key is always safe with you. Okay, the next step is uploading the public key to our server. To make the task easier, there is a command called ssh copy id. It uploads the public key from the local machine to the server at the correct location recognizable by ssh. So run the ssh copy id command with the dash i option specifying the location of the public key on your local machine followed by user at ip address. The ssh copy id command must be available on your local machine if you are using an open ssh client. Otherwise you will need to manually copy the public key file contents onto the server. For the last time, enter the password of the root user. Okay, the key has been added. Now we should be able to SSH without the password. SSH root at IP address and we are connected. Now let's see where the uploaded public key is stored. So if you list the .ssh directory, you can see that there is a file called authorized keys and its file permission is set to 600. Let's output the contents of the authorized keys file cat.ssh slash authorized keys. Here is the public key we uploaded by running the ssh copy id command from the local machine. If I open the local file in a text editor, you can see that both the contents are same. For some reasons, if the SSH copy ID command is not available on your local machine, what you need to do is create a .ssh directory within the home directory of the user. Inside that, create a file called authorized keys. Set the directory permission to 700 and the file permission to 600. Also set the owner and the group names to the username of the current user. After that, copy the contents of the public key from your local machine. 
then paste it into the authorized keys file on the server. For that you can use an editor like nano. Normally when you connect to a remote Linux server using the ssh command, you may need to add one or more options. For instance the dash i option that specifies the location of the private key file. Or the dash p option that is the port option. If your server is using a port other than the default ssh port 22. After all you need to mention the user and the IP address. With all those options the ssh command can become a little lengthy. And that makes it inconvenient if you want to ssh into the server often. Instead there is a better way to do that. You can create a configuration file to store all these options and their corresponding values. Let's see how to do that. Now I am back to the desktop terminal. Suppose I want to connect to the server just by typing ssh hostname that is caret 3. Now ssh doesn't recognize that. So let's create a file named config within the dot ssh directory. Again remember that we are doing this on the local machine. Not on the remote server. Okay the config file is opened in the nano editor. In the config file you can create host blocks. Here I am naming the host as caret 3. On the next line add some indentation. It's not required but it makes the file easier to read. First we need to add the host name that is the IP address of the server. On the next line specify the user. User in this case root. Next let's also specify the location of the private key file, identity file. This is equivalent to the dash i option. Suppose I am moving the key files into another directory named host keys. Now in the config file I can explicitly mention the new location dot ssh slash host keys slash name of the private key file caret 3 so this gives us the freedom to place the key files within any directory other than the default dot ssh directory because we can explicitly mention the location in the config file and ssh will get the file even if it is not located within the dot ssh directory Okay, that's enough for now. Let's save the file and exit the editor. Now if I type ssh caret 3. Oh, there is one more thing. We need to set the permission of the config file to 600. Currently it is 664. So let's run the chmod command. chmod 600 dot ssh slash config. Okay. Now that we have successfully set up SSH key based authentication, we can completely disable password authentication. For that connect to the server again and open the sshd config file. nano etsy slash ssh slash sshd config. In that file set the password authentication value to no. Here in my case it is already set to no. This is the main configuration file but it includes other configuration files from the sshd config.d directory. Let's see if there are any .conf files within that directory. Yeah, there is a file called 50cloudinit.conf. I think this was added by DigitalOcean, the cloud VPS provider. Let's see what's inside that file. Yeah, you can see that password authentication is set to yes in that file. If the same option is set more than once, SSH will only take the first one. Since the file is included at the top of the main configuration file, the setting in this file that is password authentication yes will take precedence. Although it is set to no in the main file. 
so i can either set the value to no in this file as well or i can just delete this file because it is no longer required now restart the ssh server system ctl restart ssh d okay logged out and back in the desktop terminal let's verify if password authentication is disabled or not explicitly set the authentication method to password by setting the option preferred authentications equals password okay permission denied public key that means password authentication is successfully disabled whereas the key based authentication works as usual you can also set more than one key pair for the same server if you want now we have set up an rsa key pair next let's create a different type of key pair before that you may check the types of keys supported by running the command ssh dash q key there are several types supported out of which we can try creating an easy dsa key you may also check the server keys stored within the etc slash ssh directory there are four types dsa easy dsa ed25519 and rsa you can also check if there are any host key directives in the sshd config file cat sshd config pipe to grep dash i host key there are three lines but all of them are commented out log out and let's check the same on the local machine ssh dash v and we can see that it's an open ssh client then ssh dash q key it's more or less the same compared to the server let's run the ssh keygen command again this time with the dash t type option set to easy dsa here i am going to name the file as caret 3 easy dsa okay the key pair has been generated ls dot ssh you may already notice that the easy dsa keys are smaller in size compared to the rsa keys that's because easy dsa uses a different algorithm so it can be as small as 256 bits okay let me move the two files into the host keys directory just like i did for the rsa keys mv.ssh caret 3 easy dsa and move it to .ssh host keys caret 3 easy dsa Here are the new key files in the file explorer. Like we did earlier, upload the public key file to the server using the ssh copy id command. For the new key pair let's add a new host entry in the config file then add another host directive this time setting the name to caret 3 easy dsa followed by the host name that's the same ip address user root and the identity file location dot ssh slash host keys slash caret 3 easy dsa okay save the file 
Now if I run the command ssh caret 3 ecdsa, it will use the newly created ecdsa key pair to ssh into the server. In the server, if you check the contents of the authorized keys file, there are two public keys now. The shorter one is the ecdsa key and the longer one is the rsa key we added earlier. Now I can use either of the keys to SSH into the server. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new today. Thanks for watching.